meditate on those lines you know let's uh, let's say lord um, fill us with your word fill us with your spirit this morning and uh, we want to sing of your mercies and uh, yes lord our mouths will make known your faithfulness to all generations your faithfulness to those around us and uh, your faithfulness to generations god and um, of course the lord will give us ideas how to make that uh, happen when it comes to you know generations that means that you uh, you and i have to uh, you know record it somewhere the faithfulness of god you know maybe record a song maybe you know a blog or a, write something down put something down so that it it stays for generations and uh, speaks of the faithfulness of god in our lives okay let's uh, let's pray father we thank you um, Yes, Lord, we, we just want to thank you for who you are, Lord, uh, a loving God, a living God, uh, not just an abstract theory or something, God, but uh, someone whom we can go to, someone who we can pour our hearts to, and some, someone who listens to us and also who speaks to us. Um, and therefore, Lord, we can listen and receive um, and be strengthened and uh, Lord, in our life's journey. We, we just want to thank you for all that uh, you do for us, God, and all that you are, Lord. Uh, with your mere presence, oh, Father God, uh, you speak volumes, Father God, uh, into our hearts. And this morning, we we ask that, um, that you will make us people who will sing of your mercies, that you will make us people who will testify, declare your faithfulness, Lord, to everyone around. And, uh, and, and we thank you that for all the faculties and the abilities that you've given us, God. And I just pray that um, uh, even as we submit ourselves, Lord, into your awesome, uh, powerful hands, God, I pray that um, you will cause us, uh, cause these things to multiply. I pray that you will cause us to um, really grow uh, in boldness and courage and wisdom and understanding and, uh, and uh, cause us to Lord, um, be that uh, spokesperson, be the ambassadors, and be, um, Lord, your mouthpiece, O oh God, um, to the generations. We thank you for this awesome uh, privilege that all of us have. We thank you. We give you all the praise and all the glory. In Jesus' matchless name we pray. Amen. Amen. Okay. Um. So biblical preaching, we've been, uh, you know, we've been spending our time uh, looking at, um, uh, you know, uh, uh, ministering God's word and also uh, about the New Testament minister. That was the last session, right? About the New Testament minister and how he uh, as uh, vessels of honor in his hands, as ministers, um, how do we uh prepare ourselves how do we position ourselves how do we equip ourselves and uh, we've been looking at several things um so today let's look at um you know we go, go into a, a, a kind of practical aspects of uh, of the course which is preparing a message and uh, presenting a message and delivering a message so uh, it's all good it's all interesting right so we'll we're in chapter nine and uh, this is page 22 of the notes, chapter nine, page twenty-two, and uh, we're looking at uh, preparing. You know, preparing the message, uh, putting together uh, what God uh, gives us, and um, some things to keep in mind. You know, uh, what we're going to look at. Uh, a couple of points that we're going to share is uh, we're going to look at is it could could be an overlap from that uh, earlier, but uh, let's just uh, you know look, look at those things. Uh, first thing that we see is that God draws out okay um, what we put in or what he writes right or what we allow him to write upon our hearts god draws that out um and, uh, and uh, i don't know if you've seen an indian well which uh, you know i have a picture of that um in the sense in my mind um an indian well which has a pulley and which uh, you know which you let down a bucket or a vessel and uh, and and then you kind of pull it out. I guess that's uh, I mean universally are in other parts, but uh, I have that picture in my mind, and uh, probably you know uh, something like that would help. Where there's a lot of uh, things that uh, that uh, a lot of uh, you know instruction, wisdom, understanding that the Lord pours out into our hearts, fills our heart. Right, um, if the, the Colossians three talks about uh, you know let the word of God dwell in us richly, uh, abundantly, and uh, the Spirit of God uh, you know being filled with the Spirit of God. So, what the Lord does is 
pull out, draw out what he has already put in. Okay, so what we have you know, invested our time in, what we have given ourselves to. Romans 6, I think it's 13, uh, talks about, you know, present your members. Right? We, we present our members, we present our, you know, everything, our, our mind, our, our listening ability, and, uh, you know, present ourselves uh, as a living sacrifice. We present ourselves to God as instruments of righteousness, and the Lord does something. Right? He speaks, he puts things, writes things in our hearts, and um, and he draws that out when it comes uh, to that time when we need to you know, share or uh, there are things that he wants us to share uh, to the right audience at the right time and so on. So he draws that out. Okay, so so that's the uh, that's something that we need to understand. Okay, so what do I speak? You know, what do I speak on? What do I share on? Well, just check what is the Lord put in your heart like what has he been speaking about um, what has he been putting in your heart and sometimes you know um, we get so pressured uh, you know under pressure to um, you know maybe if you're sharing you know every other week or every month and you're wondering okay what should i what should i speak on well uh, the thing is to always check you know what is the lord being speaking to me what has he been putting what have i been studying right what is it that has been um, making sense to me, uh, and what has he been? Uh, what are the things that he's been uh, highlighting? In you now, for some, it could be you know, maybe a, for a particular season. You know, it could be just your testimony, right? Uh, just your testimony of how you came to know the Lord. Well, that's something that he probably is highlighting, and that's something that's been coming alive, right? It could be just that. That could be the message, right? And uh, and so he draws out what. You know what is already put into our hearts um, for us. It's it's important to remember that. Um, second and third thing is that um, you know always um, think about uh, look at okay uh, the rhema and the logos. You know we know what the rhema is. The logos uh, is. Right? We have looked at that term, those terms. To understand logos is the um, you know it it means a discussion it means a trail of thought it means a discourse but um, you know when we look at the written scriptures right uh, we can refer to it as the logos okay and um, rhema being the quickened word okay uh, Ephesians six the sword of the spirit okay uh, the word used there is rhema uh, and um, I think somebody's mic is on so I just mute that. Sorry, um, and also uh, if you look at uh, you know uh, the Lord saying, uh, "Man shall not live by bread alone, but by every rhema." Right. So every quickened word uh, that comes from the logos, He quickens the logos to our hearts. He highlights the logos, and that becomes the rhema to us. Right. So um, so be aware of that you know there there might be seasons there might be opportunities where we share the principles right where we need to maybe it's like a study right maybe a book study that we do uh, which is uh, which is of great value right and we're going to look at that um, something like an expository teaching where we do a verse by verse extended passages and so on so uh, there is the value in uh, ministering you know the logos the the, we, we study, we look at the principles, we look at the meaning of the words, we look at the context, we look at the, you know, all that, and, and we look at that. But also, there is a value in sharing the rhema, which is uh, the quickened word of God, right? Be aware of, be sensitive to how the Lord leads. Uh, and uh, it could be that even when you're, when we are studying, uh, you know, doing an expository uh, teaching, there could be moments that the Lord highlights and gives uh, a, a rhema you know, from what we are uh, studying, right? And we looked at this, you know, the third point, which is uh, a word in season, a quickened word, a prophetic word, right? Um, so I won't go into that. So uh, be sensitive to the spirit uh, leading towards that. Make a note of that. Uh, what is it that he's emphasizing? What is it that he? What is it that he's highlighting? Okay. Um, the other thing is to study the word of God. Okay, um, not just read, but also study. And we know the, the difference between that, right? The difference is to go into depth, um, uh, question, understand, um, and find out. Uh, and uh, something like what we 
what we normally you know do if you are doing a book study if we are um you know if, if you are uh, uh, typically a book study where we study the word of god right uh, we find out the background and and all that so study the word of god um have a single topic or a theme these are some practical aspects um because it will help uh the listener to to focus it will help uh, it will help us those who are uh, as people who are presenting to also um present it in a meaningful organized way so a topic or theme which could have several other sub topics or you know points now uh it's good to substantiate or you know give weightage for each of the things that we are sharing whatever we are sharing uh if we back it up with scripture okay so uh, let's say we are making a you know making a point uh you're sharing something about god being good so it's uh, it's important that we share from the word okay what does scripture talk about god being good okay uh, well god himself might be testifying and saying this is who i am you know uh, or people uh, testifying to the goodness of god so uh, look at scripture and uh, and it's good to share or uh, i i won't say it's 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 important and i won't just say it's good it's it's important and it's to share uh, back it up with scripture so what happens is that when people see uh hey, it is in the word okay so what we are sharing is not just opinions what we are sharing is not just uh, you know a, a common knowledge or or uh, or understanding or or some you know cultural traditional thing but it is here uh, as the eternal truth right when we share that then it makes an impact primarily because the the word of god anchors us the word of god transforms us transforms us you know we looked at how the word of god is living the word of god is alive it's powerful and the word of god carries the power of god um, and so on so and the and the lord um uh looks watches over his word to fulfill okay to fulfill the word so he watches over to word, the word his word his promises to fulfill it so um and also faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of god so it's the word of god that produces faith the truth that we communicate uh, based on the word of god that produces faith in us when the holy spirit you know quickens to our hearts that produces faith so it's important that we base it on the word that we back up whatever we are stating with the word of god of course there might be times when we are saying something which is of our opinion you know this is hey, this is what i experience this is what my you know my experience is and it's good it's good to say that it's good to share that um but it's uh, important that some the key things that we are sharing uh, that we back it up with is scripture okay so stay focused on the theme uh, or what is the topic <clears throat> uh well use illustrations or real life examples but uh, use them uh, cautiously uh because you know uh, well our experience uh, one thing to understand is our experience could be because of many factors it could be because of disobedience it could be because of our foolishness it could be because of our obedience and experiences um so uh and our experience need not always be the experience of others so uh, when we testify we can we can just give a disclaimer this is how the lord led and uh, led me and these are things that he helped me and, uh, uh, and and you can testify so be a little cautious about that you know one example is uh, and also knowing that human beings are you know uh, not infallible uh, i remember we did a, a outreach to the, with schools some time back this is in my hometown um uh, we were in a youth uh, group youth um, youth fellowship right uh, and as part of that we had organized we we wanted to go to many schools and um, and uh, this was when a cricket world cup was one of the cricket world cups uh, was happening so um, we had um, uh you know uh, we had clippings of uh, sports people uh, who had testified to become believers and and so we were you know sh- uh, showing those clips and talking about the lord and so it was good uh but the fact is that one of the cricketers that we had uh, you know uh, shown was hansi cronier 
and uh, who's a South African cricketer. And we, we you know, uh, I, I don't think it's soon after that, but eventually, we've, uh, you know, it, it so happened that uh, he had a fall in the sense he, uh, he admitted to some uh, match fixing, he admitted to receiving money in order to tamper with the results of a game and, uh, and betting and so on. So, um, and uh, yeah, he, but he confessed, right? He confessed to that. Um, but the thing is that um, we were, it was wondering, you know, what, uh, what impact would it have in, in those young impressionable minds when they see that okay, you know we had shared about uh, this, saying that hey, this is um, this is a person. Even Hansi Kronia is you know a follower of Jesus, and then you know out comes this kind of story. Um, well, will the kids be mature enough to handle it? You know they are not yet made a commitment to the Lord. They no do not yet know that yes, you know uh, even as a as a follower of Jesus that. Uh, you know, as a human being, you are prone to temptation, etc. But then, you know, we need to overcome. So those kind of things, right? So even when we are using testimonies, we uh, we don't really elevate the person, put the you know, uh, make that testimony a celebrity. Rather, you know, sometimes as churches, we you know, we are in the danger of doing that, right? We're saying, oh wow, this is it. This person is, um, you know, uh, the greatest uh, gift to, uh, to mankind, kind of thing. But you know, really, um, humanly, uh, you know, when you look at it, we know that the person has faults and uh, just like anyone else and which is trying to overcome, he's also, he or she is also a work in progress. So, so use um, testimonies cautiously. Like Paul says in 1 Corinthians 2, he says, uh, you know, uh, he intentionally made sure that the faith of the Corinthian church will be in the power of God. Right, he exposed them to an encounter with God. He taught them from the Word. We know that he spent about eighteen months or so there uh, teaching them. But he intentionally made sure that uh, their faith, their trust, their dependency will be on the power of God, okay, and not on the wisdom of man. Um, and we see that the church had a problem. Right, church was elevating um, men or personalities, ministers of God. Uh, and uh, above uh, what was actually required. And because of that, it was causing split division in the church. They were elevating man, and that was causing, right? someone was saying, I'm of Paul, I'm of Apollos, I'm of Cephas. And we read about that, right? So, um, so Paul writes and says, This is what I did. I intentionally kept back from, you know, uh, made sure that your faith should be in the power of God. Okay, so that's uh, one of the reasons why we are careful about using real life testimonies. Um, we we must use and we can share stories, inspiring definitely, but um, uh, and be careful about the way you communicate that. Right. Okay. The other thing is, um, sorry, uh, other thing is to minister at the spiritual level of our audience. Okay. So you know uh, where they are at spiritually. Uh, you know, are they mature to handle the topic, uh, or are you communicating in a manner that is uh, that is relevant to them? Um, you know, are they new believers? Are they mature believers? Are they seasoned believers? You know, some some of sometimes we have the luxury of knowing that, right? Uh, you already uh, you're already told, okay, this is the group, uh, and this is the history of the group, uh, you know, and uh, and so you know. Okay, these uh, in your mind, you you can you know you know that okay, this is this is where they are spiritually. This is uh, what they are not exposed to, um, and so you know maybe maybe you want to talk about uh, you know the power of God. You want to talk about the you know the power of the Holy Spirit, and and you realize that this is not this is a group which is not exposed to you know such things. Then you you know you cautiously you know take those uh, small steps so that they are able to first come to. Uh, you know, uh, 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 come to an understanding that that God wants to uh, pour out His Spirit, and uh, you are giving scriptural proof of that, and and bring them to a place to receive, right? So uh, receive from Him. So know the uh, spiritual level of the audience, and of course, when we depend on the Holy Spirit, since He knows knows the need of the people, um, He will put in our hearts. He will lead us. Right, so minister at the level of the audience. Okay. Uh, any questions? Any any uh, additional thoughts on this? <clears throat> um, these are 
some very practical things, um, right? Okay. Okay. If not, we'll we'll keep going. Okay. So let's look at uh, the different types of sermons, and also, you know, we'll uh, probably have some time to go into you know the sermon construction, putting it together. Now. Now I just want to, you know, make a disclaimer here. You know, these, the, what we are looking at is uh, practical wisdom, of course. Um, you know, and uh, this is what has uh, developed over the years. Um, you know, right from the time of systematic theology, and you know, uh, uh, so this is developed over the years. And uh, well, uh, no chapter verse. Of course, there are examples of, you know, like we studied the sermons which are there and so on. So, um, so that's the thing. So these are, well, these are good models for us to, uh, for us to follow, for us to uh, develop uh, 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 messages on, or for us to study as well. Right? These are good models, and uh, and and we can use it. Uh, but there's no like hard and fast rule that you, you know, you. You need to do this, or you need to do one of this. If not, it's not a sermon. Well, no one can really say that, right? Um, it, it is just to help. Uh, it has its advantages. It helps the uh, audience. Uh, it helps. Um, uh, it helps in presenting. So, so with that in mind, we are looking at you know these uh, these kinds of sermons. Okay. So the first one would be a, a topical sermon. And as the name suggests, a topical sermon is uh, where it's based on a topic, right? Um, let's say uh, a topic could be forgiveness, right? Uh, or, or the grace of God, or the mercy of God, or the love of God. No, these are topics. And um, these could be uh, like, uh, this could be doctrines as well, like the teachings uh, of the church, foundational doctrines, right? The mercy of God, the grace of God, the love of God, uh, the gifts of the Holy Spirit, uh, and what else, you know, what you can think of, um, <clears throat> the work of the Holy Spirit in the Old Testament, or, you know, faith. So these are topics. And, uh, and so the points in the sermon, the content of the sermon is based on this topic. It's as simple as that. So the main theme, the main parts of the sermon, uh, 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 the ideas for the sermon come from the subject or the topic. Okay. So the thing is, it does not come from a text or a verse, or uh, which is another kind of sermon. Right, so it's it's the topic, so um, so uh, so it it comes from that. So the main points come from that. The main subdivisions uh, in the sermon outline come from that. Okay, um, so uh, so the thing is that we can have let's say five points, six points connected, which which talk about the topic, uh, which um, uh, expand our understanding of the topic, and. Each of those points uh, will have scripture from, you know, it can be from anywhere in the Bible, uh, from the Old Testament, from the New Testament, from the epistles, wherever, from the Psalms. So these contribute or point to the fact or give understanding about the about the topic, right? So it's a topical sermon. So um, and it's it's uh, I think it's it's a very to uh, study the word, it's a simple way to do a Bible study. You know, where we do a, you know, we're talking about this, we're talking about faith, and then you do uh, a study. Well, um, so uh, there are supporting scriptures uh, which uh, give understanding, which give depth, which give, which widen the scope of the subject. You know, when you look at God's love, okay, uh, well, you see, you can start by saying, okay, uh, God is love. The scripture says that God is love, and um, and uh, uh, it is in very nature of God to love, right? And then you go on to how uh, the kind of love, the characteristics of uh, the God kind of love, and we can talk about that, and how uh, you know we have a responsibility, and so on, right? So, uh, so these are this could be uh, 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 the train of thought uh, of of a particular topical sermon. Right? Um, so. Some advantages. <clears throat> well, it 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 uh, it goes into the depth. You know, it is very focused. So, uh, the advantages is advantage is that that you can go uh, 
uh, however deep you want to you know you you can define it okay i just want to um, you define the scope of the study and it can be a a, a real uh, deep study about faith and you know you, you can do that so it's um uh, so it uh, enhances the uh, the teaching or uh, or the didactic pedantic um, you know element in preaching right so um so that is the that's that's one of the advantages okay um however because uh well we are presenting some ideas and then we may or may not back it up with scripture um especially if we don't back it up with scripture and uh, we are sharing some you know thoughts about the topic um there could be where uh, there could be instances where we are sharing our own ideas about it well it's good to uh, you know again like i said it's good to distinguish and differentiate and say okay this is what my experience has been this is what my thoughts are right uh, and so there is uh, there is a, a chance that uh, uh, sp the speaker could share you know his or her own views on the top and well if it's unbiased it's great but if it is biased then uh, it won't be accurate right so so that's you know that's a uh, thing there that we need to uh, watch out for okay um well it depends on the scope of the study uh, and uh, you know the time given to it it can be it can have the depth but also it can it can be shallow as well where you you know where you uh, teach about four things five things uh, about a particular subject and not really be able to cover the entire you know uh, in the entire uh, uh, information within the time so that it can work both ways right um so since the emphasis is on the uh, subject okay so um some examples you know uh, i just want to um, if you want to look at the notes page 24 uh, you know a, to a typical topic could be reasons for un unanswered prayer okay reasons for unanswered prayer and uh, so we're looking at the reasons now while there could be many reasons um because of time because of um the scope of you know what we have studied and uh, what we have uh, understood you know here the outline has about six reasons okay six reasons for unanswered prayer and uh, you know it's from everywhere from from james from psalms from from the gospel from proverbs from uh, epistle uh, of peter and so on so it's a good outline it's uh, it's uh, it's it's a good study it will be encouraging it will be edifying um, to the person right so uh, but the thing is it is limited in its scope it can be uh, you know uh, it can be uh, exhaustive as well but we know that for in a in a certain, in a message you know if you're doing a one off message then there are certain limitations of time you know 45 minutes one hour whatever uh, but whereas if you're doing a series you know, uh, then you have the luxury of well uh, going into the depth and expanding the scope of the topic right so um yeah so uh, so this is a, a typical topical sermon okay so um let's say uh, you know we we can talk about different uh, topics of the same uh, um, you know uh, different topics and come out with an outline for uh, for a topical sermon so i just want us to uh, probably take some time to think of a topic okay um you know uh, what is a topic that you can think of that you you'd like to share you know uh, and we'll use that topic for uh yeah you know when we get into the details of sermon construction and uh, you know when we are presenting uh, a sermon uh, and taking time to do that as a class we'll use that so think of a topic okay um uh, what is it that uh, let's say if you're doing a topical study or a topical sermon uh, what is that topic that you would like to um, yeah, that you would like to focus on Okay, just think about that um, and just work on that okay so um, yeah so let's go on to the second one the second one is a textual sermon okay uh, now a textual sermon uh, typically it's based on the text meaning it could be 
of us. You know, maybe a, a you know, um, maybe a passage, right? So that's a, a textual sermon. So all the points of the sermon are from that text, mostly from that text. Well, it does. Uh, you could have. You know, uh, you could have a point where um, you you're getting a text or you're getting a, a scripture reference from any other portion of the Bible. Also, you know, there's no nothing hard and fast. But the points are from <clears throat> from the text only, right? So, so, um, so you have the text, and the entire sermon is based on that text. Okay. So, for example, uh, a typical a textual sermon could be, uh, you know, let's say John three sixteen, right? So, um, for God so loved the world that He gave His only begotten Son, that whoever believes in Him should not perish but have everlasting life. Now, the entire sermon is um, is from this text. Okay, so that would be a typical textual sermon. So the points. The ideas, the thought uh, of the sermon come from the verse itself. Okay, it's it's uh, it's not from anywhere else. It's from the verse. So uh, I'm sure you you've heard of uh, such uh, messages also. You've heard such messages also, or maybe you've preached such messages where it's just one verse, and uh, and and uh, well, God has put that in your heart, and that's the message. Okay, so God so loved the world, and I'm just reading, you know, God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son, that whoever believes in him should not perish, but have everlasting life. So so you're talking about, the, you could be, you know, some of the thoughts, some of the main ideas there could be about the love of God and how he loves the world. So you, you begin to explain each of them, right? Uh, you begin to talk about the world and what the world comprises of. Uh, I mean, you can go anywhere with that, right? You could talk about uh, the nature of uh, uh, the kind of people who are there in the world, uh, give examples, people who are hurting, confused, angry, um, you know, um, rebellious, uh, so on. You know, uh, these are in the world, but God loves them. You're talking about the kind of love that God has. And, uh, well, you go into... Um, what what resulted out of that love? Well, he gave, right? He he wanted to give. He wanted to change. Uh, there's a solution, so he gave. You know, out of that love, he gave. Uh, a generous God, uh, giving something of great value, great price, um, and he does that. Is and whom whom did he give? What was that? Uh, that gift was uh, this only begotten Son. So you. We can talk about that, explain that, um, and what would happen. And uh, who, of course, the gift is given to the world, but what is required of the recipient? Right? What is required of the recipient? First of all, of course, to receive, but uh, in what manner does one receive? Right? Whoever believes in him, and this would be the uh, result that they would not perish but have everlasting life. So, so the whole entire message, the entire, all the theme, all the points of the message are focused on the verse, uh, or it could be a couple of verses. And these are, you know, uh, typically uh, this. Well, in in a way, you're studying um, the 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 verse. You know, maybe you can touch about the um, the context. You know, you, of course, you'll be talking about. This is a part of a conversation that Nicodemus had with Jesus, and he would uh, go into, you know, uh, why did he come by night? He was a Pharisee, and uh, and so on. So, uh, <clears throat> uh, and uh, they were not readily accepting uh, Jesus, and, but he, you know, was curious. He wanted to know those questions. He came, and and during the course of that conversation, you know, was this revelation and uh, this message from. The Lord Jesus, right? So you you will look at uh, background, but not so much. Um, but you just look at that, right? And then share. Um, so it's 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 really wonderful when we do that. Um, sometimes you know a word in season, a, a prophetic word, uh, a timely word you know, would would fall under this category where. The entire message is word in season. The entire message is a prophetic word. Um, it's something that is uh, highlighted 
and uh, it's it's limited to maybe one two three verses right and uh, so it's 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 wonderful uh, we can uh, we can probably give a title to that sermon and um, yeah and uh, you know and then go from there and uh, and and preach it so uh, many many such messages you know we see uh, are uh, uh, oh you we've heard and these are these are good these are inspiring these are uh, you know really faith producing and uh, uh, and very encouraging right uh, messages um, and and i'm sure you heard those as well so um, so just wanted to know you know if you have you uh, were you able to think of a topic yet okay you're still working on it okay so we we'll look at it in the next class then um, you know you, next class when you come think of a topic that uh, that you want to that you want to speak on, that you want to uh, develop a sermon outline on. Okay, so uh, so like I said, you know, a topic could be you know God's love, God's forgiveness, God's mercy. We'll we'll just try and make sure that there are no duplicates, so you can share it. You can just put it in the chat, uh, probably uh, next class, and then we'll uh, we'll arrive at that. Okay, so um, or maybe I'll just put a put a link, and you can share it in that uh, Google Sheet. Okay, so. You know that there are uh, you know, someone has already taken it on a first come, you know, uh, basis. So already somebody's taken the topic. You so you pick something else. You choose something else. Okay. Um, so I'll put that link there after the class. Okay. So um, the third one, the third uh, type of sermon, is uh, what we would call an expository sermon. Okay. Now an expository sermon is one in which um, it is more of a study. Okay, it's more of a. It goes into the depth. It uh, it could be, uh, it could be running up to you know maybe uh, a couple of chapters, maybe three chapters, or four, or it could be an entire book, right? It could be the entire an entire book itself. So it's an expository study of let's say the book of Romans or book of Acts, and uh, you know so so it look it it would. Uh, you spend time on the author, the time period, the 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 background, the cultural background, the historical background, the uh, the geography of the places, uh, even and uh, and I also go from verse to verse. So there's an opportunity to um, you know look at certain words. Um, so this would actually uh, give us um, uh, the the what did the author intend to the original audience you know, uh, we look at such questions uh, or uh, we try to uh, decipher you know those things you know yes today in uh, in a contemporary thing uh, this doesn't seem to make sense right but then what what did uh, the uh, the what was the original intention like so we, we see several verses like that you know like, like for example uh, when we looked at um, uh, the ministry of the um, uh, evangelist pastor teacher class, uh, women in ministry, for example, you know, let your women keep uh, silence and you know that. Uh, well, if such an instruction today would be, uh, and I'm sure you know people when they, when they today today's people study that they so offended. Or Ephesians five, you know, be uh, wives be wives submit to your husbands. You know, people get so offended. Um, but you, you know, when you study the light of uh, and why it was said, and uh, you know, when you get into the depths of that, and then then you understand that. So, an expository sermon would would be that. Okay. Um, so, uh, uh, some of the advantages is that it it produces, or the or the audience becomes grounded in the word. Okay, grounded in scripture, uh, Bible taught uh, congregation. Right is what. Uh, you know, is is the out outcome of uh, uh, such a uh, such a expository teaching? Right? Um, so it is. Uh, it could have several themes running. You know, it, it like suppose you're doing a series, and uh, and you know on a particular day you're studying you know chapters one to three, and you know chapter or you know within those chapters you realize that there are certain themes that are you know running through like for example 1 corinthians 12 13 14 right uh, we've seen that um, so it's about the whole aspect of gifts 
its usage in church. So the theme is, you know, the gifts of the spirit and the right usage in the church and so on. So, um, so you see that it could have uh, several themes. If you're doing a book study, you see several themes like that. Uh, and uh, so, you know, we'll be address. You could be addressing one theme at a time, or a, at the most, you know, two themes at a time, and you could talk about that. Um, and then, you know, we are we are seeing that. Um, the the points in the sermon are really uh, it could be diverse but then it's it's from that theme right um, and also it uh, you know it gives uh, 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 it gives a certain depth to our understanding of the of the subject um, and so so right so we we could uh, you know so that, that that's a great way to study the word and uh, and many congregations do that uh, and or at least have uh, uh, an expository a season of expository teaching right which would be good you know you have uh, some uh, let's say um, uh, thematic study and uh, uh, you know in a church you could have a one off inspirational a word in season kind of a message and you could we could also have expository uh, you know teachings and messages so um, a good combination of this would really uh, benefit the hearer benefit the church right so uh, so these are some ways by which uh, these are some sermon uh, outlines or uh, sermon types of sermons um, that we can look at right um, okay so uh, the difference between a textual yeah I think there's a question. Um, somebody, yeah, Chris, yeah, go ahead, Chris. Sorry. Uh, for the topic uh, that uh, we need to select, uh, Pastor, yeah, uh, uh, do, do we need to uh, present that um, at at some time of this of this uh, this uh, this class? And uh, when would that happen? Yeah, we, uh, so we we will work on it. You know, as we study the mechanics of sermon con, uh, you know, construction, we would uh, we would work on that topic. So each of you would personally work on that topic, and uh, yeah, we, we'll just see how best to present it. You know, uh, because if the, because the numbers are, you know, uh, large, uh, so um, I, I will just try to work that out. I remember last semester, uh, last year when when we did this uh, particular subject. Uh, people just did videos and uh, uploaded them, so we could, uh, like, I could watch the videos, and uh, you know, so I'll I'll share that. You know, we could either uh, present a few in class, or we could, uh, you know, I could just watch the videos and give input and feedback feedback based on that. So, yeah. So you, but you could develop uh, a sermon as if you're going to preach to a, you know, uh, an audience, right? So, um, so you think of that, have that in mind, yeah. Right, thank you. Right, right. Okay. Right. So, um, any any other questions? Any other doubts? I think it's it's kind of clear. You know, topic, textual, uh, expository. It's kind of expanding. Uh, the difference between textual and uh, expository, of course, is that uh, you know, in uh, it, it has similarities in the in, in the sense that uh, you know the the main themes, the main points are from the text, right? It's unlike the topical study; it's from the text. But the difference would be, uh, I, I guess, the difference would be the volume of uh, text that we are uh, you know actually studying, because the a typical textual sermon would be one verse or a couple of verses, whereas expository intentionally we are looking at, uh, you know, uh, uh, um, we are looking at uh, vast portions of scripture, right? So that would be a main uh, main difference, right? Okay. Um, okay. And another thing is that when we're doing expository study, of course, we might have we might refer to other portions of scripture, but very rarely. Right. We are we are looking at we are uh, most of the time confining ourselves to uh, you know that uh, section or that book and uh, yeah we might consider other uh, portions of scripture okay uh, other let's say for example we are studying the epistle uh, that Paul wrote you you, you of course will uh, you might look at uh, another epistle that Paul wrote and you know for example the greetings that Paul 
you know, you see that there is a common a commonality. Like he's talking about the grace of God, the peace of God be with you. So you see that. So you might just touch upon that, but the actual study will be, you know, uh, the 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 boundary uh, of that actual study will be the the scripture portion itself, uh, right? Um, when it comes to expository uh, preaching, yeah. Okay, so um, yeah, so we'll stop here. And uh, next class, uh, we will get into uh, the mechanics of sermon construction. So when we when we get into that, you know, you could, uh, you know, uh, actually flesh out uh, your sermon, right? So so think of a topic. Um, there are different elements that we look at, um, and then you can, uh, um, you know, start working on that side by side, right? Okay, okay, we'll stop here, and uh, you guys have a great day. We'll meet again. God bless you. Thank you, Pastor. Bye-bye. Take care.